Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be doing a video that's a follow-up to a video that has received a lot of traction over the last couple of months. I made a video detailing the wiring for these Toyota push switches. And in that video, I basically talked about these types of push switches for the Toyota and what these wires do. But I didn't go into too much detail about one particular thing, which is what I wanted to do today. Also, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at the previous video about the FJ Cruiser switch wiring explained before watching this one. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out right here and then come back and revisit this one later. All right, for those of you who have already seen my other video, the Toyota push switch wiring explained, one thing that I didn't demonstrate in that video was the wiring for the illumination. All right, just as a quick refresher, uh, these are the switches that I'm talking about. And on the back of this, you have a diagram that corresponds to each of these wires colors. Here's the wiring harness. This is the switch. And on this harness, we have green, red, another red, and a black. Okay, so let's take a look here at the diagram here. In my first video, I showed you how to wire a switch to a USB charging port. All right, and so basically what that did was that it allowed us to uh, activate the switch and then turn on a USB port, okay? The one thing that I want to talk about today specifically has to deal with red 2. Okay, it says normally connected to your dash circuit to be on when your dash lights are on. Okay, and what that means is that there are two light bulbs in here. The first light bulb sits up here where when you push the button, it'll activate the uh, accessory and then it will indicate that the accessory is on by lighting up this light. Now the second light is meant for nighttime. Whenever you turn on your headlights, there is a light inside here that also illuminates along with your, uh, your dashboard lights. So this is what we're dealing with today, okay? All right, so here is the wiring harness. We're gonna ignore everything else but red two and black. Just to give you an example of this light here, we're gonna take these two wires. This is a battery for a video light that I have. Um, it has a positive and a negative terminal. Positives on the left side here, and then the negatives on the right side, okay? I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna connect the negative wire the ground wire to my negative terminal, and then I'm gonna connect this red wire to the positive terminal, okay? So watch what happens to the light down here whenever I complete this circuit. All right, so that's it. So independent of any accessories, we have uh, an indicator light here that is meant to be turned on whenever we turn on our headlights. All right, so with that concept in mind, let's go ahead and take it to the car and see how we can apply this concept in our fuse box. All right, I'm here inside of my FJ now, and I'm going to find the fuse block inside, and this is it right here. So I'm gonna open this up, okay? And then I'm just gonna take a look here at the diagram, and right now I'm looking for things that might be illuminated whenever we turn on the headlights. Very first thing that I see here might be the gauge and the tail light. So whenever we turn on the headlights, uh, the tail lights also turn on, okay? All right, now taking a look at the tail light fuse, it's gonna be the one th three over from the right on the bottom, and it's a 10 amp fuse, okay? So if we take a look at this, that's one, that's two, that's three. This is our 10 amp fuse for the uh, tail light. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. The idea here is that we're going to tap into the circuit, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using something called add a circuits, that pretty much look like this that will allow you to uh, add a line into the same circuit by adding an additional fuse. If you're looking at the switch, you wanna make sure that you have the orientation correct, so let's flip it this way. And we're dealing with red two, so this would be green, red one, red two, okay? So red two and the black are the two ones that we need uh, independent of these two. So let's just uh, set these aside for now. And again, if you've already wired up your accessory, you should already have this green tied to your um, your power source, which would be your battery, and then this red would be uh, tied to your accessory, okay? So we're gonna take these two out of the equation for now. All right, so now we have red two, which I'm going to then uh, connect to my add a circuit. All right, and what they do is that they allow you to uh, tap into your current fuse block by uh, inserting your existing fuse into one slot, and then your additional fuse into the other, so there's two slots here. And then uh, over here you have a metal connection, and so we're gonna have some exposed wire that we're going to connect 
into our out of circuit. So we're going to stick this into here, make sure that we have contact with that metal cylinder in there. And then you can do one of two things. You can crimp the connection or you can solder the connection. I typically prefer to solder the connection because it's a more secure connection. But in this case, for the sake of example, we're going to be using our crimp tool. This is a standard wire stripper. And at the very end here, you see these little flat jaws. Those are meant for crimping, okay? So we're gonna crimp this connection. All right, so now we have contact. Now all we gotta do is plug in our existing fuse to complete the circuit for the um, tail light. Okay, we're gonna put that in this first slot here. Make sure that it gets pushed in all the way. And then we're gonna grab a secondary fuse simply to power the light bulb. We're gonna take the smallest fuse that we have, and this is a set of fuses that I purchased for this truck. Um, I had to purchase a second set of fuses um, that were a different size for my RAV4, so just keep in mind that whatever car you have, just pull out the fuse, make sure that you are buying the correct fuse, okay? Um, if you haven't seen my other video about um, how to install a USB charging port in your car, um, take a look at that because I do a pretty uh, detailed explanation on different sizes of car fuses. All right, so just looking at this here, we have um, different amperages here. I'm gonna go with the smallest one because this is just a tiny light bulb inside of this little accessory. Um, it's not gonna require a lot, so I'm gonna pick the smallest one, which happens to be the five amp orange fuse. And it doesn't matter which direction you put it in. I'm gonna just place it in here like so. Okay, and I'm gonna push that in all the way. Now that we have contact, all right, we got our original fuse and then we have our accessory fuse, okay? So this is going through the ADA circuit and it's connected again to red two, okay? So now that we have this put together, let's go ahead and take this to the car and see what happens. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go into our fuse block and we're gonna remove the current fuse from the circuit, this one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that out. All right, since we have our 10 amp circuit removed, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the headlights okay you'll see here that my headlights are on but there is no illumination on the dash and also the tail lights which should be on are not on okay all right just to further prove my point i'm going to place a 10 amp fuse back into the slot to complete the circuit okay so that's a 10 amp fuse but now that we have a fuse in here to complete the circuit. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the headlights and you'll see that my dash lights are in fact on. I don't know if it's easy to see, but you're also going to see that the tail light illuminates right there. You can also see the lights illuminating here whenever I turn on the switch. Okay, so that's off. And this is on. That's what happens when the circuit is complete. Let's go ahead and um, go back to our add a circuit. So once we have our add a circuit connected to red two, we're just gonna go ahead and plug this in. We're gonna try the tail light circuit, which is this one here. It's gonna be next to that 7.5 ACC. And we're gonna place it right there in this slot next to that 7.5. We're gonna plug it in. Now all we need to do is uh, ground it to complete the circuit. So what I typically like to do is I use this bolt here on the side door as my testing spot. Um, obviously this is just a quick and easy way for me to test the connection. Once this is all good then I will find a more convenient grounding spot to uh, to finish off this job. But let's go ahead and touch this black wire to this grounding spot right here. There it is. All right. So now you see that little thing light up. The best part about having this line already connected is that when you add additional accessories, and then if I ever wanted to add any more switches, then you can use that same line that we just installed and then tap into it uh, with red two from the other accessories uh, into the same line. So here's an example here. This is another push switch from another accessory. Uh, tapping into line red 2 using a T-tap. Right, and if you don't know what a T-tap is, it is essentially a way to splice into another line through uh, this little port here.
real quickly, I just pulled this apart. This here has a metal connection. This is attached to the other accessories, red too. And then this little uh, apparatus bites into the original red two line, which is what we just installed right there. All right. So then once we have this thing, we can then plug in the other accessories line directly into here. And that's going to prevent us from having to do this process all over again. Um, again, once you have that first line installed, you can then just tap into that same line uh, from the other accessories. All right. One detail I will point out is that um, typically whenever we have these switches illuminated, we do have this dimmer uh, dial which allows us to adjust the amount of light that we have on these switches. You'll see here this, just if you take a look at the garage switch, as I dim this, um, these lights on the dash go dim. Same thing goes for the console. And then if I raise it up all the way, the lights um, remain unchanged. I'm not a person who really uh, has this switch on anything but the highest setting, so it doesn't really matter to me. So I usually just keep everything up on the highest level. But for some of you, it may kind of be something that you may want to look into. From what I've read, it's a lot more complicated than just uh, connecting a single wire to an ADA circuit and into your fuse block along with a grounding wire. So what that requires is probably some uh, resistors that controls the brightness, which is a whole nother thing which I am not familiar with. So if you've done this job and you have any insight on being able to control the brightness of your switches, then please feel free to chime in and uh, let us all know how you've done it because I am kind of curious to see how it would be done. All right, again, you guys, thank you so much for all your support over the years. Um, I'm trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. If you guys can help me do that, um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share these videos with your friends, anybody who you think might find some value in this. Uh, I know I haven't had a lot of time over the last couple of months to make any videos, but um, you know, this was something that uh, I noticed that people were drawn to. There was some interest in this particular video about the switches. And so I figured I would close the loop here and talk about something that I didn't talk about in that last video. So, all right. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful and informative. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.